Okay, so I finally watched it. After years of trying and failing and after Nama Miskin recommending it over 15,000 times, I finally managed to watch this film and now I get it. Now I can understand why this film has been so influential on so many filmmakers around the world like Tarantino or George Lucas or Zack Snyder or the Russo brothers or of course. I asked him to tell you, if you feel a lot of down in your mind, Go and watch Seven Samurai Shulti. Whether it's a single shot or a sequence or the entire plot, now I understand why this film has been remade or recreated so many times over the years. And whoever thinks foreign films have to be dark or boring or complex, this film will break all of those myths. It could be as exciting or emotional as Avengers Endgame. And it can be as entertaining as a film like Alavai Kunda Purumulu. Of course, without an entire song dedicated to Pooja Hegde's legs. Welcome back to Around the World in 50 Films and in this episode I'm going to be talking about Akira Kurosawa's epic film Seven Samurai and why it is so damn epic. The philosophy of this film is based on a recurrent theme in many films that you might have seen like Rangde Basanti or V for Vendetta or even Vada Chennai. I read this quote somewhere that perfectly captures the essence of Seven Samurai. For any peaceful society to protect itself from violence, it must maintain a capacity for violence. These are some of the reasons why I think this is such a timeless masterpiece. Reason number one, it has every element of an epic. So if you're a 90s kid like me, you'd probably know the intro of Pop of Girls by Heart. Sugar, spice, and everything nice. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girl. But Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction, chemical X. There are great stories, and then there are epic stories. And for a great story to become an epic story, it needs to have certain epic elements that actually work together to to elevate it into an epic story. An immersive world, grand scale, simplistic story, dramatic storytelling, memorable characters, struggles or obstacles, and genuine emotion. And if possible, a moral that doesn't sound like a message that we usually get to see in so many of our Tamil commercial films. Hey! If you notice, a lot of animated films and a lot of superhero films have all of these epic elements and when you watch Seven Samurai, you'll know that it has all of these elements and much more. Reason number two, a swift and immersive screenplay. A traditional screenplay of most films follows a three-act structure, which is set up, conflict, resolution. Whether you take films like The Godfather or Satya or Queen or Basha or even Gilly, in the setup, you are introduced to the world and its characters and of course the main protagonist. And then comes the inciting incident, which is an event or a plot point that thrusts the protagonist into the main action of the story. But there are few films that take it a little further. For example, Super Deluxe starts with Vembu having sex with her ex-lover who dies a few minutes into the act and then about how Vembu tries to get rid of his body. Alavaikunda Purumulu starts with two baby boys switched at birth and this event will dictate the rest of the protagonist's life. Mad Max Fury Road starts with the escape of Furiosa and Immortan Joe's wives which sets off a big chase. In 16th century Japan, a group of bandits come across a village and they plan to come back to that village and loot it of its resources. The farmers of the village come to know of the plan and now they have to either fight or die. So what happens with this is Number one, the world of the film gets established. Number two, no time is wasted into getting you into the story. And number three, you get immediately invested in the characters and you start rooting for them right from the beginning. The duration of the film might be three and a half hours, but trust me, the film will suck you in from the first frame and it won't leave you even after the last frame. Reason number three, a universally adaptable story structure. Now, what's the most versatile story known to us as Indians? 
Because of its story and the characters and the events that take place in the story, it can be interpreted in so many different ways and from so many different perspectives. If you set that story in the world of crime, it becomes Talapadi. If you set it in the world of politics, it becomes Rajniti. If you take Draupadi as a character and set her in another mythological universe, you get Devasena from Bahubali. The farmers of a poor village under attack by a group of bandits hire a bunch of samurai warriors to defend themselves against the violence. It's a simple, predictable underdog story, but because of that simplicity, it has become a template for many other films. Take the story and set it in a world of bugs and you get Bugs Life. Set it in the wild west of America and you get The Magnificent Seven. Set it in 19th century India, replace the bandits with the British and the battle with a game of cricket and you get Lagan. Replace the samurai warriors with a bunch of superheroes and you get Avengers Endgame. There is a sequence of the samurai warriors getting recruited and this was one of the first team building sequences in cinema and even this sequence has become like a template for so many films like Ocean's Eleven, Inglorious Bastards or even Lagan like I've already mentioned. Reason number four the absence of a central protagonist. If you take 90% of our Indian commercial movies, you have one hero who rises against the system, fights for the oppressed and saves humanity. And there's nothing wrong with that. A single protagonist can represent so many of our own emotions and when he or she wins in the story, it feels like even we can win in life. There's this particular dialogue in Seven Samurai. It can have so many meanings and that again is represented by so many of the characters doing their own part and contributing to the story. Apart from the bandits, mainly there are all the farmers of the village and then there are the seven samurai warriors and each of them have their own characteristics, they have their own body language and of course their own role in the story. But at no point do you feel like this guy is the hero or this guy is the hero. Whether it's Kikuchiyo who is the unstable and wannabe warrior or Kanbe who is like a calm and composed Dhoni-like leader or Manzo the farmer who fears for his daughter's safety or the old man of the village. You relate to every character, you remember each one of them and you feel for each one of them long after the story is over. Reason number five, the portrayal of the battle sequences. Without giving away too many details, let me try to explain this in the simplest way possible. Battle sequences today are like the highlights of a T20 match. You get the larger than life action sequences, big explosions. You can create whole new worlds and characters and creatures and all thanks to hundreds of people who are working in the VFX department for any film. But battle sequences those days were more like a test match. And I mean that in a good way. The battle sequences in Seven Samurai are nothing like I've ever seen before. This was was a time when there was no CGI or VFX or any special effects so you had to rely entirely on the screenplay to make the battle exciting. Before the series of battles begins, you're actually taken through the battle strategy and the plan of attack and defense and this is done for two reasons. Number one, it serves as a great build up to the action that's supposed to come. Reason number two, it actually gives you a sense of the space and the surroundings and makes you feel like you're actually in that village right next to the farmers and the samurai warriors about to fight those bandits. And when the battle begins, just like a cricket match has its own scoreboard, you're always aware of how many more bandits there are about to kill at any point of time. And when you get to the final climactic battle, Okay, that's an entire film in itself, so I'm just not going to say anything more. Please go watch it and come back. So those were five reasons why I think this film is so epic, but that's just my opinion. And you might be scared that this is a long film, it's black and white, it's in another language, and that might stop you from watching it. And you might also think that these films might not be as entertaining as our own Indian commercial films. But let me just say this, that if this film never happened, most of your favorite commercial films would have never been even thought of. Give this film a chance and I'm sure that it's going to change your perspective. See you next time.